Ted Cruz, boy, has he been, where is Ted? Boy, oh boy, and he's dying to get back there and ask those questions, I know. And he said, let me out of here, President, I want to ask those questions. He's got some beauties, I'll bet. Thank you, Ted, for everything, you've been incredible. Welcome back to Verdict with Ted Cruz. I'm Michael Knowles. Senator, my first question, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that was this morning at the White House. And uh, this morning, uh, the president signed the USMCA, the U.S.-Mexico-Canada tra trade agreement. Uh, this is what's replacing NAFTA. And there were a whole bunch of senators, a whole bunch of House members, a whole bunch of folks from all over the country that were, that were there. It was outside in the South Lawn of the White House. We're all bundled up in jackets and scarves and gloves. And this was before, obviously, the impeachment trial today. Uh, it was. It, it was this morning. The impeachment trial starts at 1.00. Uh, so was there and, and the president was making reference that we're getting ready to head into questions. <laughs> I wonder if maybe the president has heard an episode or two of this show and knew you had a lot of good questions. Uh, lined I up. am. I am confident the president is downloading each and every <laughs> episode. So uh, before we get into the questions, because that was that's the big story of of the day. And you had some of the most prominent questions and the questions that went viral. I have to point out. It is after one o'clock in the morning, but the impeachment trial wrapped up around 11.15. Yeah. The cameras get turned off. I suspect you were spending a little more time in the Capitol. Maybe there was some wheeling and dealing going on. Is there anything you can tell us? Well, there were a number of us that stayed afterwards, stayed in the cloakroom, which is which is a little room off. Both sides have a cloakroom. There's a Republican cloakroom, a Democratic cloakroom, and, and several of us probably spent a half hour, 40 minutes back in the cloakroom talking about is, is there any way to resolve this witness issue? Is there any way to get to 51? We're going to find out on Friday. So and getting to 51 would end the the impeachment trial. It would go, there would be no more witnesses. You'd go right to a vote. Most likely the president gets acquitted. It's all over. If we get to 51, it's saying enough is enough. We've heard enough evidence that the House heard 17, actually 18 witnesses. We've heard the testimony and let's end this. Let's not drag it on forever and ever. And, and we're close. We've got a shot at that. Mm -hmm. uh, all 47 Democrats will vote to hear additional witnesses. They want to drag it on forever. Right. Uh, the question is, are there going to be four Republicans to join them? And, and the answer is maybe. Uh, it looks like two Republicans are pretty solidly going to vote with the Democrats on this. Mitt Romney and Susan Collins, from their public comments, they, 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 they seem to have made up their minds. They've more or less said they're going to vote for witnesses. Uh, they have. And, and beyond that, I, I think the, the, the next two votes that are, that are most in play are, are Lisa Murkowski and Lamar Alexander. Lisa Murkowski's in Alaska, Lamar Alexander, Tennessee. Correct. And um, I don't know how they're going to vote. I can tell you there were several of us trying to say, is there a way we can reach an agreement to get this over and done with. I don't, I don't know that it'll work, uh, but I can tell you it, it was actually, it, it was several of us that were, were, were trying to see, all right, where is common ground? And, and, and I don't want to, we'll see if, if we get it done, great, and we'll, we'll, we'll know by Friday, but, but until that happens, we'll, we'll just have to see. They got to make up their minds. I've got to talk to my bookie after this. I want to put money on this whole thing. We'll just have to wait and see. You're not going to make a prediction one way or the other. I, th I think it comes down to, to those senators and they're making a decision mm -hmm. which direction they want to go. And, 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 you know, at the end of the day, you try to make the case on the merits. You try to just, you know, talk through, all right, what are you worried about? What, what would help ease your concerns? What would get you to a place that you were comfortable? But, you know, look, I'll, I'll say one thing about whipping votes in the Senate is, is – senators, you know, browbeating is not very effective. So, you, so, so you're trying to listen as much as anything to say, okay, what, where do you want to get to? That, that, mm. that actually determines it quite a bit. Do, do you want to end up at a yes or do you want to end up at a no? And, right. and, and, and that's, that's not unique to the Senate. That's, that's true in a lot of negotiations is, you know, getting a sense of where someone really wants to end up. At, at, if they're looking for an exit ramp, uh -huh. then it's easier to try to figure out, all right, how do you get there? Right. If they're not looking for an exit ramp, that that become, becomes a lot harder. Then there's really nothing you could yeah. say that could bring them there anyway. Okay, well, then switching gears into questions yeah. that do have answers. Yeah. We got, obviously, the House Democrats, they had their arguments. The Trump team had their arguments. Now we move into questions from senators. Yep. But the senators are not the ones 
actually voicing the questions. It's the chief justice who is presiding over impeachment. He's the one who asks the questions. Can you just take us through this process a little bit before we get into the specific questions you asked? Well, sure. And and the reason the senators don't ask the questions is, is actually the Senate impeachment rules. There are a separate set of rules that govern impeachment. Mm-hmm. And, and those rules provide senators cannot speak uh, in open session. In other words, when the TV cameras are on, when the reporters are there, senators can't speak. And, and so the rules for questions are you write down your questions and then the chief justice reads them. And, and part of the reason for that, if you think about the Senate is designed to, to ensure some civility, some decorum. Mm. Those rules are designed so you don't have senators screaming at each other <laughs> and, and engaging in, in mortal combat. Right. Um, the House has a lot of that. I mean, the House is a different <laughs> that, chamber. That's the purpose of the House, I think. And, 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 and so... <laughs> So having the chief justice reads the read the questions sort of calms the temperature. Okay, so so there were some hot moments today. I don't know. I don't know that it completely calmed the temperature. And and you had some of the biggest questions of the day. Can you just take us through them and, and maybe some of the answers? Well, sure. And if you look at today, there were ninety three questions that were <laughs> asked today. There, there were forty seven by Republicans, forty six by Democrats, and and the process. So. Yesterday and, and this morning, I wrote a bunch of questions and, and, and submitted them. So the so leadership office was compiling questions. So mm. I submitted a dozen questions. Um, and a bunch of other senators submitted questions. And I think, I, I think altogether there were a couple hundred questions that had been submitted by Republicans. And so the leadership office is trying to organize them and, and sort of group them together and, and fairly set the order. Everyone mm. has a right to ask their question if they really want to force it. But leadership was trying to have a fair and equitable order and give every, everyone a shot who wanted a shot. Mm-hmm. So I submitted a dozen questions. But then you've also got you're sitting there at your desk and everyone has little note cards and they're kind of, uh, oh, they're bigger than three by five. They're probably four by six note cards. And it ended up, so there were all together four questions that I wrote that were asked. Um, three of the four I wrote right there on the spot. <laughs> so you, you didn't come in, you were, didn't written them at home, and you were workshopping them. So I had submitted a dozen questions. Yeah. Uh, it ended up that three of the four were right there. So today was busy. <laughs> today I was listening and working. So the first question I asked was one I hand wrote. And as, just as I was listening to the first couple of answers that the house managers gave, hmm. and, and they're focusing on quid pro quo, the first question was just, as a matter of law, does it matter if there was a quid pro quo? And 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 is it true that, that quid pro quos are... are often used in foreign policy. Quid pro quo, we've talked about this on the show a number of times. It's just, you give me this, I give you that. And that's been the phrase at the really at the center of this impeachment. Well, and, and they were bickering back and forth, is there a quid pro quo or not? And, and that's the whole argument for Bolton and additional witnesses is, well, wait a second. You know, according to the New York Times, he says there was a quid pro quo. That's why we need Bolton. And, and, and my point is, look, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It makes no impact on the legal issue. And, and, and so that... That was the question I wanted to, to to emphasize at the outset to make clear the, the the legal question is, does the president have the authority to do what he did? And in this instance, look, a point I've been making from the beginning, a president always has the authority to investigate corruption if there's credible evidence of corruption. So were you satisfied by the answer that you got? So I was. Uh, Alan Dershowitz got up and answered it, and, and he explained no, that, 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 that it, it, is, it doesn't matter if there's a quid pro quo. They happen all the time. Um, this, know, uh, Alan Dershowitz being a lawyer for the president. Uh, he, he was. In fact, Dershowitz pointed out yesterday, both he and I uh, were at the announcement at the White House of the president's Middle East peace initiative. Look, that on its face is a quid pro quo. <laughs> You, you look at what the president is promising. The president is promising, among other things, to the Palestinians that, 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 that collectively the United States and other countries will invest $50 billion if the Palestinians stop terrorism. Mm-hmm. That's a quid pro quo. That's an exchange. That happens in foreign right. policy all the time. And, and so I think that was important to make clear that an awful lot of what people are fighting about doesn't affect the question, the legal question right. before the Senate of whether the president committed impeachable crimes, whether the president committed high crimes or misdemeanors. And the House Democrats are not satisfied with that answer. Shockingly. <laughs> um, it, 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 look, th- this is a political impeachment. It is a party line impeachment. Right. And, and, and it became clear. So, so the second question that I asked, it stemmed from an, an answer that Adam Schiff, the, the lead House manager, gave. 
uh, where, where he proposed a hypothetical. And, and he said, imagine it was, it was 2012. Would Barack Obama have been justified investigating Mitt Romney? And I think he was pretty happy with his hypo. He's pretty <laughs> proud of it. So I'm back in the cloakroom a few minutes later. And in the cloakroom throughout questions today, there, was, there were Republican senators coming in and out. And we're hmm. talking about questions. We're writing questions. So actually, so Lindsey Graham came up to me. And Lindsey's a trial lawyer. And Lindsey and I are, are, are good friends. We yeah. talk a lot, especially during impeachment. And so he's thinking like a trial lawyer, and he's like, hmm. well, 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 what if, what, what, what if Obama had evidence that Romney was corrupt? And he, he like kind of throws that hypo out. And, and I'm like, look, th- th- that's good. And, and so I went back to my desk and got out the little note card and just sat there with my blue felt tip pen and wrote hmm. out the question. So the question I wrote out is, using Mr. Schiff's hypothetical, if President Obama had evidence that Mitt Romney's son was being paid a million dollars a year <laughs> by a corrupt Russian company. Yeah. That, that Schiff's hypo was Russia instead of Ukraine. And Romney had acted in his official capacity to benefit that, the, that company. Would Obama have had the authority to ask that the potential corruption be investigated? So in other words, it's not just, hey, randomly investigate this guy. It's if you got evidence, if you got evidence that on the face of it looks pretty damn crooked. Right. And it's a, and this is a direct parallel. This it, is a much more precise analogy. It, it, it is a much more precise analogy. So I hand wrote that card out, but I left the name blank. And so I called Lindsay back and said, hey, you know, the hypo you suggested to me, I wrote it out for you. What do you think? He said, great. I said, all right, you ask it. I'll co-sponsor it. Yeah. So he got up and uh, he, he asked it. And, you know, Schiff, look, for a lot of these questions, most of the Republicans, and actually this strategy on both sides, most of the Republicans ask the questions of their own side. Mm-hmm. Because the, the principle is, look, if you ask the other side, they're going to get up and filibuster. They're going to present right. their argument. They don't want to answer the questions. And so the, the, the large majority of questions on both sides are directed at friendlies. Be- because the the... Impeachment trial goes on so long, so few people are watching the whole thing that unless you're looking at the highlights, unless you make a highlight, it just doesn't matter at all. That being said, there are a handful of us who tried to cross-examine the other (laughs) side. Now, do we know they're going to filibuster to avoid the question? Of course. Mm -hmm. But there's value, I think, to to, to teeing up that hypothetical, making clear that, that their position is, doesn't matter what evidence of corruption you have, you can't have an investigation if it's your political rival. Well, that's just nutty. I mean, right. that's not the law, and that doesn't make any sense. Uh, and so, yeah, so Sch- Schiff wanted to avoid that pretty significantly, but but I, I don't think that, that that answer was effective. Right, and at, at the very least, you see him filibustering the yeah. question and, and simply not answering it. Well, and that was even more powerful with the next two questions. Mm-hmm. So the third question I asked is, is the only one today that I had written beforehand. And it actually was a, was a question that was derived a number of the listeners on this show. We've asked p- folks, tweet out questions if you have questions you want me to ask. And a, and a, and a bunch of folks wanted questions about the so-called whistleblower and, and about political bias of the so-called mm-hmm. whistleblower. So this is a question I had written out before that, that points out that, that the inspector general for the intelligence community wrote that, 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 the, that the whistleblower had some indicia of arguable political bias uh, in favor of a rival political c- candidate. And just for, to set the stage for people, the whistleblower, so-called, is the one who made a complaint about the Trump phone call who to Ukraine. Started, started the whole thing. Right. And the inspector general found that there was an indication that he had a political bias against the president. That, that, well, the inspector general said there were some indications of that. So, so I don't okay. want to overstate what the, what the okay. inspector general said, but said there were some indications so I asked, I, sa- I said, look, the, did the whistleblower ever work for Joe Biden? If so, did he work for Joe Biden on issues involving Ukraine? If so, did he assist in any material way with the quid pro quo that Joe Biden executed when he demanded that Ukraine fire the prosecutor that was investigating Burisma, the company paying his son a million bucks a year? So Schiff completely refuses to answer <laughs> Just of course. utterly yeah. dodges, won't answer it. Um, just, just, I mean, n- nothing, nothing. He, he, instead, he gives, and, and look, we knew he was going to do this, but he gives a prepared 
speech on we must preserve the sanctity of whistleblowers and protect their identity no matter what. That wasn't the question at all. So I got kind of and I, I got ticked off because he so dodged the question, but it was a tell. Yeah. The fact that he was terrified by that mm. question revealed a lot. So I got up the instant he finished asking, uh, uh, dodging the question. <laughs> not rather, answering not the question. Not answering the question. So I walked back into the cloakroom. And instead of handwriting this, I, I asked the guys there, I said, all right, someone have a computer I can use? Yes. So I sat down on a computer because this was going to be long enough. I needed to type it. And so I typed out this question. I said, you refuse to answer the question on political bias. Are the House managers refusing to tell the Senate whether or not the so-called whistleblower had an actual conflict of interest. Hmm. And the question went on to say, because he said he wants to keep the whistleblower confidential, I said, there are 7 billion people on planet Earth. Almost all had no involvement, <laughs> zero involvement in Biden's quid pro quo. Right. Are the House managers unwilling to say whether the so-called whistleblower was a fact witness? Mm -hmm who directly participated in and, and could himself face criminal or civil liability for Joe Biden's demanding Ukraine fire the prosecutor who was investigating Burisma. Now, amazingly enough, the second time, so when I wrote this question out, actually the leadership team said, look, you've asked a couple of questions. We don't want to ruffle feathers. Can you get anyone else to ask this question? Yeah. I said, sure. So I, I, I sit next to on the floor, uh, David Perdue from Georgia, I said, hey, David, what do you think of this? Uh, he read it, said, great, let's go. So he asked it and we co-sponsored. Great. Um, but there was that Ronald Reagan line. It's amazing what you can do if you don't care who gets the credit. Oh, this is this <laughs> is very much a collective trying to drive the point forward. Mm -hmm. But it was amazing when this question was asked for the second time. Adam Schiff completely dodged the question. <laughs> Would not. So Adam Schiff, the position of the House managers they refuse to tell you whether this so-called whistleblower has actual bias, has a conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. And if he del if he actively participated, if he was wa working for Joe Biden and if he was the guy Joe Biden used to say, hey, go to the Ukrainians and cut off their military aid until they fire this prosecutor. For all we know, and there are reasons to suspect based on what the inspector general said that, that, that this so-called whistleblower is not some disinterested third party. He's, he's right in the middle he's of a it. player. Look, he's an if, active player. If Biden were if an investigation shows Biden is, in fact, corrupt. It is entirely possible, or at least the House managers wouldn't tell us if this so-called whistleblower was worried about his own rear end, was mm -hmm. worried about, wait a second, if they go after Biden, they're going to prosecute me because I was involved in this corruption. House managers, not only wouldn't they answer that, but one thing that was also very revealing, on most topics, Adam Schiff would get up and he'd just kind of riff. He'd talk and he's good. Look, he yeah, is a he's talented a smooth trial. operator. He's yeah. smooth. Um, on these two questions, you could see him. He'd pull out a piece of paper and he would read word for word the prepared answer. And he's <laughs> speaking very precisely. Look, uh -huh. he's under oath. Yep. And he's speaking very precisely. And it was really clear that he didn't want to say something on this about the the what the inspector general said were, were significant indications of political bias on the part of the whistleblower. And, and that that suggests this whole thing was cooked up in the beginning and right. was a crock from day one. Right. You know, it reminds me of when you were talking to the press yesterday and you got a little too close to the target and then the press started to lose their minds. Reminds me of that a lot. Before we get to mailbag, we just have a few moments left. I want to ask you about a strange political stunt today that I don't understand and I think most people don't understand. I read reports that the Senate Minority Leader, Chuck Schumer, invited to the impeachment trial a Ukrainian criminal who was... <laughs> Actually wearing an ankle bracelet at the time. What was that about? Well, you remember, this was this guy, Lev Parnas, who had yeah. his kind of 15 minutes of fame yeah. because in the middle of the trial, he ran on Rachel Maddow and said, oh, I've got all sorts of information. <laughs> yeah. and, and this guy is is under criminal indictment right now. So he, he, he is facing criminal prosecution by the U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York uh, for, for serious felony offenses. Mm -hmm. And... 
Chuck Schumer decided to invite him as his personal guest <laughs> that to, to come to the trial. Because, look, Schumer's trying to make the point we need witnesses. So I guess inviting some guy under criminal indictment is my way of, of showing we need witnesses. So here's the funny thing. Up in the Senate gallery, to get in the Senate gallery, you have to go through metal detectors. Yeah. <laughs> they have a rule of no electronics. Well, this guy, Lev Parnas, has an ankle bracelet on. He can't on put it through the machine. That, that <laughs> is mandated because he's under criminal indictment right now. So, so what happened, he was told, we're not going to let you in. You won't get into the gallery because you've got an ankle bracelet on and we're not letting electronics in. And so he ended up never going. So, so <laughs> Schumer's guest ended up never going in the gallery because, because he was wearing an ankle bracelet. I that mean, it was... Tells, tells you a lot about the desperation, I think, it, of the Democrats it, here. It, it tells a lot about everything going on with, with this trial. Okay, so in the remaining minute or two that we have, we've got to get to the mailbag. Few questions, real quick, from Ronald. Is it the House team's position that Joe Biden should not be investigated, because, or Hunter Biden should not be investigated, because Joe Biden is running for president? Or just because he's Joe Biden? Would it be okay with the House Democrats to investigate Biden after the election? In other words, does running for president give Joe Biden prosecutorial immunity? Uh, it's a great question. They haven't answered it. And, and the short answer is the House Democrats don't care. <laughs> I, you know, it, it, it's like saying an ostrich with, with, with its head in the sand, mm -hmm. does it have a view on, on, on which way's up? They, they don't, they hate <laughs> Trump. So, so that's, on the question- That's what it comes down look, to. Their position is that any investigation into Joe Biden and Burisma and Hunter Biden is baseless, is frivolous, is phony, is a sham. All of those are words they've used. Mm -hmm. That's just nuts. It may be that Joe Biden was not, in fact, corrupt, but there's plenty of basis to open um, open an investigation. You know, there's a legal term that, that, that when you when you talk about a tiny bit of evidence, the, the legal term you use is, is even a scintilla of evidence. Mm -hmm. uh, although I keep a bunch of other Republicans want to write scintilla in their questions. I keep saying. Nobody knows what a scintilla is. Don't write that. And then everyone in the cloakroom starts calling it a chinchilla instead. A chinchilla, so that, that's, it's uh, very, yeah, it evokes images. It's very confusing. So we, I don't think we've had a scintilla question. We keep suggesting, okay, replace it with shred. Like, l l l like <laughs> yeah. let's talk English rather than, the, 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 than fancy stuff. But the House Democrats aren't addressing any of the merits right. of that. They aren't addressing... Uh, what Hunter, Hunter Biden did for his million bucks. They aren't addressing Joe Biden's uh, quid pro quo. They're just saying, I don't want to hear it. Right. You know, I, it obviously seems crazy that if you run for president, all of a sudden you could get away with a crime. That would mean if I commit a crime, I could just start running for the Democrat nomination. And frankly, I'd probably poll higher than a number of the hey, candidates. Hey, listen, right it's now. in flux right now. <laughs> it's, I could grab it before Iowa. Yeah. I, I, I want to get into some of those 2020 politics, especially because I was a few days away. But we're out of time. So we're going to have to do that tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm Michael Knowles. This is Verdict with Ted Cruz.